everybody! Love it when she calls me your honor and says I can watch. Yeah. All right, now bring it up. Another creep who likes to watch your next comedian, Rail Sidebottom! I am so listening to that fucking song before I go to bed tonight. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Hey, summer's over! That was it. Two days. <laughs> that was it. It's June bloom. Don't get excited. And stop coming into Costco and buying air conditioners the day after. <laughs> Fucking sold ten of them today. What? It's over. Oh, God. We'll get to that. Um, it is drinking weather though, and I was very fortunate. Who's here? Who, who likes drinking? Jeez, I like drinking. You know what I really like about drinking is going to parties. I like going to keg parties. And I live in Arcadia. Oh and Arcadia's a college town. And college towns have keg parties. And I got home the other night, and I got out of my car, and I heard it. There's a band playing, I could see people down the street walking this way, walking out. I'm like, oh fuck, there's a huge party in my neighborhood. I just got off work, I need a cold beer. So I took a walk and walked into a college keg party. <laughs> Here's the problem with a guy looking like me walking into a keg party. It looks like dad's home. <laughs> and the problem with that is, uh, you know, the band was playing, there's tons of people. Didn't exactly stop the party, but I did have a few guys come up, they're like, hi, can I help you? I'm like, no, I'm okay. They're like, are you here to sell someone drugs or something? I'm like, no. I'm just a keg back there in the kitchen. So I found my way to the keg. People left me alone. A couple guys stand there at the keg, and uh, I grab a cup. The guy says to me, who must be 20, want me to show you how to use this? <laughs> you want me to show you how to use this keg, old man? That fucking nerve. <laughs> I said, this thing? How you hold the cup down and tilt it so you don't put foam in it? I was doing this before you were a fucking idea. <laughs> God damn. So, as inevitably happens, the cops show up. The band stops, we're in the kitchen, in the rear part of the house, so they're clearing out the band, people are going out that way, they're going out the back. One guy hangs out with me in the kitchen, brave enough to hang out with the old guy, he knows he can get away with it. Cops come in, also I look like I'm a dad of the cop. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, sir, is this your house? Fuck out of here. So we walked out, pounded our beers, did the thing you always do when you leave a cake party, throw the cups on the front lawn, and uh, went home. And uh, that was my evening at a cake party. It was really great. Oh, love cake parties. Uh, the band was a ska band. Did I mention that? In 2022, ska band in Arcata. Huge surprise. Huge fucking surprise. Let me say this about ska bands. I recently, I don't know if you can see this, I fucked up my mustache to the goatee ratio. I shaved it thin, so I had to match it on this side. So now I have a divided country. And I can't decide which direction to go. Ska band guitarist or porn star? By a round of applause, ska band guitarist. Nice try, Olivia. Born stash! <laughs> My wife doesn't like the porn stash because she says it looks like a gay porn stash. It's great. Um, it's more porn. Uh, I do work at Costco and uh, I do pander. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. It's a, it, it's a great place to work. It seriously is. It's super liberal, it's super laid back. And uh, it's this liberal. If Costco didn't have the liberal drug testing policy that it had, we'd all be working at Walmart. <laughs> I work with so many fucking druggies and alcoholics, people that come to work high, people I'm like, what? And they're like, dude, Kay's fucking awesome, dude. Are you high right now? They're like, fuck yeah. I'm like, whoa, I am old. <laughs> oh. 
I love being there. I love listening to people. I love eavesdropping. And uh, I pick up great conversations just listening to other people. I was walking by the register the other day. There's a really cute girl in line. There's a guy in front of her unloading stuff on his belt. He's like, hey, how you doing? She's like, all right. Unloading his stuff. And he goes, so uh, you're watching that Obi-Wan show? She goes, no. Oh, why not? She said, I don't know, because I'm not 12. <laughs> Sorry, we're closed. That's the kind of girl who, when you ask her what her star sign is, she says, stop. I love that girl. Really great. I really uh, I was a cashier for a while at Costco, which was not fun, but I find ways to make any mundane experience at least partially enjoyable. And one of the things I love to do was fuck with the people who are on a cell phone who need something from you but can't be fucking bothered to talk to you. Let me tell you how that works. It goes a little something like this. I can't pick up current until five o'clock. I'm at yoga. No, I'm gonna leave yoga. I need all this. I, no, you have to pick them up. I ha I'm gonna be at yoga. I can't leave. I know you're at Pilates. I can't. You have all this. I'm gonna be there. Yeah, no, up there. You just have to be there at five to pick them up. Someone like that gets special treatment. Now, as a cashier at Costco, obviously, I can't do a lot. But there is one thing I can do. I can control the paper feed on the register. I can make that register tape as short or as long as I want. I can hold it down for me. I held down that receipt for that woman who wanted all this. I couldn't be bothered to fucking talk to anybody. I gave her a 17-foot receipt. One item, three feet. One item, three feet. One item, five feet. I just kept going, kept going. She was chatting with her phone. Didn't notice a thing until I handed her the fucking scrolls of Moses at the end. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm like, have a nice day. Can I have your card, please? Thanks. Now, the great part about that is she has to go to the door. And if you've been to Costco, they have to check the fucking scrolls. So, it takes them another 20 minutes. And they look over, they see me, they know what's happening, they're like... It's really nice. Uh, so yeah, I hate people that come into Costco. I don't hate the people I work with. I love the people I work with, they're really great. Um, and I love, not the ones that yell like that. They're okay. I love bucket lists. I love hearing what people want to get done with their lives before they die. So I ask people, you know, what's on your bucket list? What do you want to do? I always get fun stuff like skydiving or get a tramp stamp or whatever. I got a great one the other day. I came up to a coworker, said, what's on your bucket list? And she said, you know, before I die, I'd really like to do coke off a boner. <laughs> Yeah, and I said, well, I'm holding one of those things right now. And I can get the other one by tomorrow. So, that should work out well. Um, I do uh, make films, and I do uh, enjoy doing that kind of thing. I'm working on a project right now where I have to have someone do color correction for me on the film, so it looks really good on the big screen or on TV or whatever. And I was talking to a mutual friend on the phone, and I said, you know, I'm waiting for a phone call from my color guy. So if he calls, I'm gonna have to hang up on you. I gotta talk to him, we gotta just get this project done, we got a deadline. And she said, you're what? I said, my color guy. She said, your colored guy? Your colored guy. And I said, no, my, my color guy, the guy that does color correction for my film. She said, ugh, the correct term is colorist. He's black. It doesn't matter. He's a color guy. He's the guy that's going to do the correction on my film. Now, I want to leave you with one thing. I know I only have a couple minutes because so much time has been sucked out of the room. I love to dance. I'm not good at it. Nobody is when you're white. So you have to learn. And that's why I headed north in the 90s to Humboldt County where they have a thing that was once called reggae on the river. Yeah.
and Rainy on the River was the place where white people go to learn how to dance. I had some idea. But by 1998, due to failing ticket sales, Reggae on the River was booking bands besides reggae bands. And the band that got booked the year I went was called Fela Kuti. Now, if you're not familiar, Fela Kuti plays a type of music called Afro-funk. I had never heard Afro-funk. I did not know what Afro-funk was. I didn't really care. I'd been drinking and doing drugs all day. I probably had 10, 12 beers, baking hot sun in Southern Humboldt. And here comes Fela Kuti. I'm about to go use the bathroom, but everybody starts moving towards the stage. I think I have a sound cue right there, because I want you to hear what it sounded like to me when I finally learned how to dance. It wasn't skinny me well. It wasn't that. It was this. I started playing air drums. I started playing air saxophone. I started playing air guitar. I started playing air everything. <laughs> Fancy jog, really, the dance in life. 